No, sí. So, I mean, uh, if you remember this assembly, um, I used this last time in the tutorial. So we're just gonna look at key shot rendering. Um, to do key shot rendering, all you have to do is go to tools and then select key shot render. I have it already pulled up because, you know, for, it's faster. It, it does take a couple of seconds, you know, for it to load up and everything because it is a powerful tool. Um, so when you uh, come into it, like when you open up Solid Edge and you go through this method by clicking on tool, by having the assembly open, and when you go through the Keisha render, um, the assembly is automatically brought into the key shot. So you don't have to upload the assembly uh, per se. And um, okay, just press. Okay. So when you come into it, you're most likely not going to have this panel on the left. So what you will have to do is you will have to go to Windows, and then Library, and then Material. And so then you will see this um, panel that you see on the left. On the, um, so some of these tabs are just materials. You know, uh, you can go through, select different types of material that you want. You can apply them to each individual. Um, one thing before I mention, uh, controls. So for controlling the view in Keyshot, if you hold down the middle uh, scroll bar and move it around, it translates it. Um, if you want to rotate it, you have to click and hold the left mouse button. I know this is the opposite of Solid Edge. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And so it does take a little bit of time for it to, you know, kind of um, get back to the optimal view. You could say right now it's very pixelated, but it does take a little bit of time um, to, to kind of combat that. Like, you know, uh, if you want to position your assembly a certain way, like really quickly, you can also go to performance mode. Like if you hover over it, you can see what it's about, you know. It, it, it quickly um, it disables intensive settings, so you know you can quickly move it around um, and have a position like that. The move tool is really cool. Um, you can select each individual part or assembly. Like for example, if I select this, I can move it. like that and then I can position a different way like if I wanted to make an exploded view or something like that you know um, so you, it, it's very customizable you can do it however you want I'm just gonna go ahead and reset it now a bit of cautious it does take a little bit of time like you can see right now because it is a very intensive program. Like if you're running this on a laptop, you know, you will definitely hear your laptop. You know, those, all those fans are gonna be, you know, turning pretty quickly and um, so yeah, it's very intensive. Pan, um, you can use uh, same, same concept, you know, you can pan in and out, dolly, it's more of zooming in, like focusing on each individual component if you want. Um, perspective, it goes all the way, you can go into it, but this is more of, uh, you know, demo purposes, so I don't think you, you need to mess with this that much. So the main thing is on the left where you have different materials. So you have, you know, different types of metals, glass, liquids, light. Um, so like, for example, let's go ahead and add some real quickly. So 
So what I'm going to do is I see that uh, I know these are wires, but they're um, surrounded by like um, rubber hose, sort of. So what I'm going to do is type in rubber. And it automatically pulls it up. I can click and drag, or I can just select it. Now, it, when I'm clicking and holding it, um, I can preview it without letting go, like how, which part I want to apply it to. Like for example, right now I want to apply it to this uh, hose. And then I just let it go and it applies to the hose. Again, I can do it on this wire as well. Yeah. And then uh, let me go ahead and do a metal. Let me do aluminum. And then you can see there are different types of aluminum, you know, if you want to do uh, aluminum polish, aluminum rough, you know, with meshes. Um, yeah, so there are different types of things. So I want to do the polished. I'm going to hold the drag it and apply it to whichever part I, I want to place it in. Um, And then um, also you can do different, you can customize with anything you want, you know, so like, so like just for the sake, you know, they're looking cool. Let me just add a couple of cool looking colors. Like I hover, I can either add it to the cap or the small, uh, you know, on the little little hubs or I can even add it to the you know wheel and the green looking wheels so it's everything is up to the uh, user um, you can also add uh, background environments like back plates you can do interior outdoors or studio so let me go ahead and do interior you know this is more of industrial type use so I'm gonna go ahead and do a warehouse And then you can zoom in and out. Sometimes when you have the environment, you have to position it in such a way um, so that it looks good. You know, it doesn't look like it's floating out in the middle of nowhere. Like if this is a warehouse, you want to make it Like, see, that, that looks a lot better, right? I made it smaller, you know, with perspective to the warehouse. And then you can also see how there are shadows on the bottom as well. So it kind of reflects what type of environment I'm in. Um, and so when you're done, what you can do is, like, after you're done customizing, this is a lot of, you know, environments. If you want interior, outdoor, studio. Uh, type of textures you want, colors, you can customize different types. So everything is up to the user and it's a lot of customization, even materials, you know. So after you're done with this, you just click on render, um, you know, what type of resolution do you want? And so like a preset one or a present one, whichever one. You can select where you want to save it. You can even do on animation, but right now I don't have anything animated. So I'll just do render. And it will take a little bit of time for it to render. After it's done, you'll see a green check mark over here. And 
you can save it and it will automatically um, after you have the check mark you can just save it to the folder that you're trying to save it um, and then you can export it to you know wherever um, and you can do lighting as well you know different types of lighting So yeah, that's that's about it for uh, Keyshot rendering. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, I'll just let it, um, is for, um, by the way, did you have any questions before I get into the 3D printing? No. no. Nope. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, let me just stop this. So the other thing is the 3D printing um, interface that we have, you know, all you do is go to the application button and then 3D print. You guys have probably experienced, you've probably seen this uh, a little bit, you know, especially with um, Solid Edge 2019. Give it a second, but it should pull up. Yeah, this key shot is. You think it's taking a while because you're doing an assembly. If you just do it on a single part, I think it takes less because it's preparing that model, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Let me go ahead and cancel. Oh, um, yeah. So this is the 3D, uh, uh, you know, print interface. You can kind of see it's very, you know, basic. It has, when you bring in the part, yeah, it'll show you uh, relative to how big the 3D printer is. So you can change the dimensions, um, you know, the type of file that you you brought it in, three, uh, STL or 3MF. Are you guys familiar with 3MF file types? Oops, I am not. So 3MF files, well, you know, STL, right? Standard uh, 3D printing <laughs> file format. Yeah, correct. 3MF has colors as well. So you can bring in the colors. Oh. Yeah. STL is just normal, you know, whatever material you printed in is the material. Well, 3MF, you can bring in the colors. Um, you know, you can change the settings, printer size, depending on what printer do you have, if you have it hooked up. Um, you know, you can change the settings as well. Um, if you want to um, order it online, you can as well. Um, and what it does is basically we partner with um, Three Your Mind. Um, and what it does is you place the order and, and one of their uh, support engineers, you know, they call you back and they're like, uh, you know, this is how much it's going to cost. Do you want to place the order? And uh, they ship it right to your, you know, your address. So anything that you do, you know, they print it uh, and package it and send it to your, right to your doorstep. So that's about it for the um, 3D interface that we have. Very simple, basic, you know, not too complex. Just wanted to add to that is when you order online, not only it tells you the cost, it actually tells you if your model's 3D printable with the material that you chose. So oh, that's what I add there. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's a very, you know, um, very expedited process. So people who don't even have a 3D printer, they can, you know, kind of access uh, material. You know, if they wanted to 3D, like if they had an idea that they designed something and they wanted to print, um, they can get that as well. And if you have your own 3D printer, you can connect it to that and change the settings and everything. And even if you have the printer, it's so great because you can print the test version, let's say in plastic, and then make a metal 3D print online. If oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, if you wanted to do like a rough, rough draft, and then like if you wanted to do like a physical 
first prototype, you know, like an actual thing, then you can do with the metal or whatever material. Yeah, absolutely. Do you guys have any questions? Not on my end. Okay.